Welcome to Farm Term Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about Easter. I have a mega video full of Easter projects for you. I know that you're going to love these. These are some of my favorites. I have so many new Easter DIYs coming out, so stay tuned for those. But today we're going to have a look at some of my most favorites and ones that are your favorites too. So I hope you enjoy. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up. But let's get right into the DIYs. I am making a really cute layered sign here and this little wood round came in a pack of three or four of them from Hobby Lobby and it just costs when you buy it on sale it ends up only being three or four dollars for all three of them and I'm just staining both sides with some antiquing wax and you kind of see I'm very liberal when I put it on and then just kind of wipe it off with a baby wipe you could use a brush you can stain this to be how dark or how light you want but I just wanted a nice good like dark wood piece behind everything so for the very top layer that I'm using this cute little bunny that I got at Dollar Tree and the edges are always so rough on these that I go around and I sand the edges first and then I'm just giving this a complete coat of white chalk paint and then to bring out the little definitions of this cute little bunny shape I am just going around with some antiquing wax to highlight those areas. This is one of my most favorite types of signs to make. This is kind of, I make these signs all the time for my house and I get so many compliments on them. Whenever I do them on my channel, everybody loves how they look and they are so fun to do. So I'm just cutting a little piece of styrofoam there to glue to the back of the bunny and then I am going to glue it onto this wood sign and then we're going to make some magic happen here. So using a couple sprigs of or picks from Dollar Tree and then I have this whole bag of like leftover pieces that I collect as I'm done using things that I'm pulling out to use for this. I'm just going to layer florals all the way around this thing to look like it's just poking out from underneath this bunny. So if I have like four of a particular type, you can kind of see how I do like top, bottom and sides and then I go off center and you're just going to work your way around the whole shape of whatever you're using uh, for your centerpiece and you're just going to keep sticking in evenly around all the different florals. This is so fun because you can add your colors here that you want to use and like I'm just kind of doing more purples here and you can use like whatever your favorite flowers are or just greenery. You could even do, if you didn't wanna go as far as sticking all these different ones around, you could easily put like a wreath behind. I've just had a hard time sometimes getting the wreaths to stick and so that's why I ended up doing this method right here and just keep going around until it looks great to you. Now I'm taking this piece of rope from Dollar Tree and I, I'm, I wanted to make a tag for the back, but as I was um, unraveling it to get a little strand of it, I thought that all the little pieces of it would make a cute bow. And so I'm going back and forth deciding if I want a Mrs. or a Mr. You'll have to wait and see what I choose there. But I take a piece of that rope and I just tie it off to make the little hanger there and then use a lot of hot glue on the back. And then using this pit berry, you can kind of see down in the corner the roll of that that I got at Hobby Lobby. It is going to last me a very long time. I bought pink and yellow. Buy it when it's 50% off. It's going to last you forever. And I am just taking this off and sticking those down in, the pink and the yellow, and kind of every other one, if that makes sense. I go with that method of doing like two on the sides, one on the top, and then turn it and kind of go on the corners there. So that way it looks like it's even all the way around. And I did just, it's wired, so I did just wrap it around like a pencil or something to kind Kind of give it that little corkscrew shape and i thought that was super cute now i'm just trying to decide if i want a mrs or a mr here just i ultimately decide that if i put it up as a mrs it covers a lot of the bunny shape and i didn't want to take away from that so i glued it down on the bottom to be a little bow tie for a little mr bunny the bow would be completely optional and whatever your preference was what do you guys think of this i absolutely love this it is such a cute little hanger you can put this on a door you can hang it from a peg on a shelf you wouldn't even have to put the little hanging tag on the back you could use this on a plate rack i just absolutely love this this hanging egg came from Dollar Tree and it has this beautiful like wood grain almost to it. So I took the little hanging twine off and I just used a little plaster to fill in that hole. And then I am just taping off to do, I wanna do like a little ticking stripe on here. So I tape off the middle stripe there and then I just using a little bit of paint, pounce on all of the edge of that, the painter's tape there and go up that. And then once I have the edges done, I will fill in the middle. And then I am just using a little bit of, and I always say this wrong and everybody 
everybody always tells me it's washi tape or washi tape. I'm I'm not sure, and I'm sorry I probably butcher it every time. But I just use that to make a crisp line, so that way I can have my negative space. Hopefully that makes sense. You can kind of see what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to use that little pounce method to paint in the little sides of the ticking stripe. And now for the very satisfying feeling of peeling back that tape and seeing all of your stripes that you painted turned out and there's no bleed through or anything like that. That is absolutely the best when you're crafting. I'm sure if you've done stripes before, you know what I'm talking about. I have this cute little bunny from Hobby Lobby. I was just there yesterday and still saw them in the store. So hopefully yours has some too. But any bunny that you have would absolutely work to do this. I'm just using some little wooden discs that I glued onto the back of the bunny and I'll put the glue onto those. That's going to give it a sturdy hold with that galvanized metal and it pops it out like a three dimensional look. It makes it look much more high end than if it was just flat on there. And I'm just making a little finger twine bow. I thought it looked really cute to add that on there. Again, you guys know how I am with twine. I just love it. So, you know, whatever kind of bow you would want to make, if you wanted to put it up by the ears, make it a little Mrs. Bunny instead of a Mr. Bunny, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to tie off the middle of the twine though, and then I will just glue that bow right onto his neck for his little necktie. Now you could glue some twine on the back if you wanted to hang this somewhere or rest it against something. I wanted it to stand up on its own. So I am just taking three tumbling tower blocks and gluing them edge to edge. And then I will take some glue and glue that on one of the other edges of this, like the end. And then I will glue it onto the back of my egg and I will kind of prop my egg up so I can make sure that it's not going to be leaning forward or tipping over or anything and let that dry just a little bit. And then I actually go back in and put hot glue on the top of those and I glue three more tumbling tower blocks on in the opposite direction to make it just a little bit more sturdy. Hopefully that makes sense and you can see what I did there. Here's this little egg. It is so cute. I feel like it is very like French farmhouse. I absolutely love this. It's so simple. That little pop of purple gives it the perfect little Easter touch and little pop of color. Let me guys know what you think of this down in the comments. I've been loving doing DIYs with these cute little seed pots here. You can get these anywhere that you get garden supplies. I've seen them most recently at Walmart. I grabbed these uh, at Lowe's when I was there, but these have a beautiful texture. Some of them don't maybe have as much texture as this, but it's totally fine. All you need is just something that is of this little like peat pot consistency here, almost like a cardboard, but I'm just going to give a very light coat of paint here. You can do it as messy as you want. You don't want full coverage. I'm just trying to have a contrast to the brown color as well as show that texture a little bit um, so that way it'll be fun to work with we're going to do some Easter decoupage so I have all of these different types of Easter napkins I went to home goods one day and they had so many fun Easter napkins I couldn't decide I just kept picking one up after another being like I want this one I want this one and so I have to do some projects using all of them now because I have to justify why I bought so many napkins but these turn out so cute and I really can see me doing so many more projects with this so I'm just using a little bit of water on a paintbrush to go around the design to get that cut out so that way we can put it on our pot. I use some Mod Podge and I put a little bit of that on my pot and then I'm just going to stick down this cute little design of these little chicks here. Once I get it placed where I want it, I will go over the top again with some Mod Podge and you can kind of see how the edge is hanging over the bottom of the pot there. That's not a problem. I'll just put Mod Podge over that and it will just be set in place. You can also put a little bit of water again on that edge if it's going up over the top or the bottom and kind of tear it off and give it a rough little edge but when it's folded over the bottom it looks just as cute the fun part of this is you don't have to stick to like one particular napkin style you can jump around from different napkins that you have that have little pieces that go together I think I use like three or four different types of napkins on this and the bigger the pot, the more designs that you would be able uh, to use on your pot. So these are quite small, so it actually made it a little more manageable. That's why I decided to make four of them because I wanted, I mean, I got, once I got started, I wanted different feels for all the different ones. So you can see this one, I love this cute little flower here. So I just put that little bit of water around the flower and then I just gently, one thing I did forget to mention, I do show it, but I did forget to mention that you want to make sure napkins are like a two ply napkin. So you wanna make sure that you tear them apart. You 
you peel back that back white layer or whatever color it is there's going to be a backing on there and so you're only working with that top layer it's going to make life so much easier otherwise what happens is it, it just turns into a mess because you're using that other layer and it will come unstuck and then you get it stuck to your design and anyway so just remember to peel that second layer back it really only takes like one time of making that mistake before you remember every time to peel it back so anyhow I, there's so many fun little designs here uh they weren't all necessarily easter they were all kind of more like had a spring type of theme to them i thought these little bumblebee one with this little vintage writing on here was super cute and you just kind of lay it over i mean if you want to tell a story in your mind like i love to come up with stories for my crafts you guys know that that's something that i love to do and so each little pot i kind of had like a little theme going or i would you know think like oh well this is going to have this on it i don't know i just was kind of going with it and I mean, I just keep adding to it. And honestly, you can be as simplistic as you want, or you can add as much as you want. But this particular napkin had this cute little stripe on here, this little flower here. So I just put a little bit of water all along the napkin there, and I just carefully tear that. And I'm gonna put a little border around the top of my pot. I thought this would look so cute and set it off. So once I tear that off, I just kind of lay that around the top of the pot, and it kind of adds that little detail. I mean, these were so much fun, and you can use your imagination. I know Dollar Tree has some beautiful napkins that you could get and this is something that you could do for any season it doesn't necessarily have to be for spring or easter or anything but i just loved these when i saw these napkins i was like yes i want these <laughs> and so i'm just showing you here really quick just a couple of the other some of the i won't go into detail on each of these other pots that i do but i'll just show you a couple of little things here now the fun thing is is you can decorate these however you want as far as putting things in them if you want to put just like a little cute potted plant in there just an artificial one that's perfect you want to actually use them to grow like your seeds from how darling would that be uh, so many cute little things that you could do i love this little bunny on this one isn't that so precious I thought it was so cute but there's so many different uh, things that you can do with these I, I'll show you what I ended up putting it in them uh, in the final reveal here um, but I mean you're limited only to what your imagination can think of now on this one the bunny was too big for the pot but I didn't let that stop me I just bent its ears over and and went with it you can still tell that it's a bunny i still thought it was really cute and then um i just mod podge it down and go with it i thought it was i don't know i loved this little bunny i'm really happy with how these all came out as you can see i put a little nest in one of them a little floral arrangement in one of them i got some raffia and made like another little nest with an egg in that one and then those little carrots i thought were absolutely darling in that peter rabbit one <laughs> That was just so cute. What would you put in your pots if you made them? Can you think of something different that you would do? I just, I personally love how these turned out and I'm so excited to use them. This project is just made using some of the paint stir sticks that you get just at the hardware store and also a couple of eggs from the Dollar Tree in the little pack that they come in. So I am cutting the paint sticks down the smaller size to eight inches. And then I have these two larger paint sticks that I am not going to cut down at all. I'm just going to leave them that size. And I cut four of the 12 inch paint sticks down to eight inches. I hope that makes sense. And then I am just gluing them like crossbars, almost kind of like a ladder that I'm making here. I just thought this would be kind of cute to hang these little eggs from each of these little rungs here. So I'm just using some wood glue and a little bit of hot glue to give them that long-term and short-term hold there. I will completely paint this in white chalk paint. You can paint it to whatever color matches your decor. Now I'm moving on to printing on tissue paper. So I have done this before and I absolutely love it. And I just take a piece of tissue paper. I cut it down to the size of just a regular size of copy paper and just tape the edges. Now, not all of the edges need to be taped, but you need it to be enough that it will go through your printer and you just print directly onto the tissue paper and it comes out so pretty. So I just had those little graphics in egg shapes and I will leave the link to where I got those. It was um, provided by the graphics fairy. So I'll leave the link to those if you wanna print these out. Now I just go around and sand all of the edges of our little piece there so that way it can have a distress look and then I'm just carefully going to cut each of these out on the of the tissue paper now I probably didn't need to be quite as exact as I was because I will sand the edges but I'm just cutting them down and I'm just going to use some Mod Podge to get these to stick on now it can be any kind of Mod Podge it doesn't have to be the satin the matte or the glossy it really is just to get these to stick so I paint it on very thin and then I just use my finger to press that in to make sure that it is completely adhered everywhere now I didn't mind if there was wrinkles in the tissue paper because it will have a tendency to wrinkle a little bit i just thought that added an aged look so just be aware of that this one i kind of didn't get it centered a few times it took me a few times you could see i could kind of peel it up and work with it a little bit there just go slow and be gentle because it is tissue paper 
paper and it can rip, but you do have a little bit of like space to work with if that makes sense. So I just do the same technique on all three eggs to get those images on there. And then I take my fingernail file, so whatever you use to sand with, and in a slow downward motion, I just go around the entire egg just to get all of that excess tissue paper off and it's going to make it look crisp and clear. Now, after all of the Mod Podge has dried underneath that tissue paper, I go back in with a very thin coat on the top. This is just going to protect that image so it doesn't get damaged in any way or if water were to splash on it, depending if I keep it in my kitchen or anything, it's not going to harm the ink that's on there. Now on each of these little slats, I am just going to tie a little bit of twine. I wrap it around several times and then I am just tying it off in a knot. And then these eggs come with a hole already punched in them. And to get that with the tissue paper, I just poked like a little end of a paintbrush through so that way I could uh, feed my twine through. And I just tie it off and then I will just cut off the back side of that. And then you can see how each of those look now they're on there. And I did just do a little bit of a finger twine bow that I put on the top of each of the eggs I thought that added just a really cute little element and again I love twine so that's totally optional now I have these little half beads that I had stained with antique wax and I thought that they looked super cute on all the little like joints almost like it's covering like a nail head it's completely decorational total optional step I just thought it added a little bit of extra something to it and then I just dry brush over each of them to brighten them up a little bit once you stand this up, as you can see, those eggs look so cute just hanging there. I love how this turned out. It's perfect for like a backsplash in a kitchen to rest it against that or on a shelf somewhere. What do you guys think of this? I love how it turned out. I have this cutting board or charcuterie board that I got from Hobby Lobby in their clearance. It was like $15 originally. I think I got it for like 75% off. It had this great big scratch down the middle in the plastic. So it's not like you would really want to use it. So I knew I was going to have to completely cover the surface. So I was thinking that Mod Podge would probably help with paint and this like plastic texture that it is. So I did a good coat of a Mod Podge all over because I plan on painting the whole surface. And I just paint it all a white color. It takes like two or three coats to get the coverage that I want. Then using a combination of painter's tape and some washi tape, I made like a ticking stripe. So the wide stripe down the middle and then the two small stripes on the side. Now watch what happens when I peel back the tape. It starts to peel the paint off of the surface and it does it almost with every strip that I peel off here. Now that Mod Podge was completely dry before I put the paint on. That paint had sat overnight and it had completely dried, but it still peeled some off. But I really liked the look of the stripe on there. So I just decided to go touch it up my best and see what that looked like before I scrapped it or started over. So I just went in with a little teeny brush with some white paint that I did and just touched those little areas up. And then I also go in with a little teeny tiny brush and I do the green. I did just take my time as I was doing this. I moved really slowly. This is even sped up to like double time, but I just wanted to make sure that I could get as crisp as lines as possible while kind of freehanding it. I go in with a little bit of white of paint that's left on my brush and kind of dry brush it over to kind of give it an aged look. I thought that might mask any type of imperfections or anything there. So of course you would not have to do that step if your peel back of your paint worked out great. So I have these three shapes from Dollar Tree, the little chick, the little bunny, and the little egg. And I thought it would, would be really cute to do like a stack on there. So I'm just using that little spackling to cover up the little hole that is on the top of these. And I just stain them with some antiquing wax. And then I go around the edges with some white paint just to kind of give it a little chippy look and give it a little dimension when it's glued onto the cutting board. I take just a little bit of this pink pit berry and just kind of wrap it all around the egg. I thought that would be kind of a super cute little textural element there. And then I just lay these out on my cutting board to kind of see how I want them to lay. And this is the order that I decide. I felt like that egg needed to be in the middle with the little pit berry on there. And I have these little wooden discs and I'm using that to glue onto the cutting board. It will kind of raise them up a little bit, give it more of a 3D look than it would have had anyway and it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a high-end feel I think plus you're getting a really even surface to glue on there with that pit berry on the back of the egg Next, I take a piece of rope from Dollar Tree and unravel it and take one of the little strands and I just feed it through the hole that's there and just tie a knot in it to kind of have it look more of a like a rustic element there. I think this turned out so cute. It is going to be so fun sitting against the backsplash in my kitchen. I love this. I think the colors look so cute and I love the little color of the antiquing wax on the bunny and the egg and the little chick there. 
This project is so fun and it really does scream springtime or just that fresh garden vibe. So you can use any kind of bucket or planter that you have. That was just one. It came from Ikea, but I did pick it up at a yard sale. And then this little bundle of, these are grapevine wreaths. And I honestly think they're supposed to be together like this. It was $3.99 from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to cut them apart and I'm just going to use one of them because I thought it looked a little too thick. And, and I don't really know that these were intended to be cut apart like this but there's no reason you couldn't do that. So then you get two projects out of it. And then I'm just taking some floral foam here and I'm just going to cut this. I just use my putty knife to cut that fairly easily. And I'm just shoving some craft paper down there so that will kind of help the um, foam stick up a little bit there so it'll be flush with the top of the pail. And I just stick all that foam in so that way I have a good surface to work with. Now I'm taking some Spanish moss and I'm just going to glue around all of the edges here. I just put a little hot glue down. I grabbed that Spanish moss just in little clumps there and I just kind of put it around be careful when you're pushing that down because the glue does seep up through that and it, you can really burn yourself which you know I may or may not be speaking from experience here but I'm just gluing all of this all the way around and you don't necessarily have to use Spanish moss if that's something that you it's too messy for you or you don't love it I mean you could use some reindeer moss if you wanted there's definitely different options that you have here now I do go around and just trim the edges here because I want kind of a cleaner look maybe not super clean but it was kind of getting a little squirrely and out there. Now I'm taking some of my fencing wire. This is just wire that we had from our farm that we use when we uh, fix our fences and everything. And I'm just cutting a little piece of it and making like a hook. Kind of like when you're putting flowers, I don't know, at the cemetery on Memorial Day and you take your wire hangers. Do you guys remember doing that <laughs> to help the flowers stay in the ground? I just remember doing that a lot with my grandparents when I was younger. So I'm just folding these little wires over making little hooks and that's going to stick down into that floral foam that we have there. And and, or I guess it's just styrofoam, not floral foam. And it's just going to make that little wreath stand up there in your pail. Now I have this is from a project I did last year that I pulled out the greenery. And then this is Dollar Tree greenery right here that I'm showing you. So this is just like a vine that I got from Dollar Tree. But when I stuck this one up that I had, I took it out of another project that I did. I really liked the way this one looked. So I'm just going to cut a couple of sprigs off of it. But really Walmart has like beautiful boxwood or eucalyptus that would work that you can get for like 97 cents a sprig. So you definitely, I mean, if you wanted to use flowers or something to do this, you could. But I'm just taking the two sprigs and I'm sticking it down in. So one kind of goes off one direction and the other goes off the other. So it's going to try to look like it's growing up around the wreath, kind of like a vine. So I just kind of will break, not really break, but kind of pull apart some of the grapevine and stick some of the little uh, greenery through it. That's what's going to help it look like this greenery is growing around the wreath there. Now I happen to have this little nest in my stash here and this would be completely optional, but I really did feel like this drove home the springtime feel. I love how clean it looks like and looks without it as well. So I mean, it's something you could easily remove if you didn't want that there, but I'm just making a little hook there with the wire and just to kind of help get it into place there. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like with it and without it. And you can tell me which one you like the best, but I really just think this is so beautiful. I've seen these uh, in the craft stores or in boutiques or anything like that. I've seen these go for like $30, $40, maybe even more than that. But I really just think that this looks so pretty and so natural that it would be beautiful in any space. What do you guys think of this one? Have you guys seen these all over the place? I feel like I have. They are called a sugar mold and I've seen a lot of people put candles in them and things. I found some at antique stores, at flea markets, vintage market days. All sorts of different places. I found this one on Amazon and I will leave a link down in my description box, but I love doing different things with them. So I'm just taking a little bit of Spanish moss and I'm just going to stick that down into each one of them. This is just going to kind of fill up that space in the bottom and I thought the Spanish moss would look really, really cute. Now, if you've purchased any of these with candles in them before and you use the candles, you can definitely, there's lots of techniques to get the wax out so you can use them to decorate with. I'm just going to take some carrots and I'm just showing you that it doesn't matter where you get your carrots or what kind you use or if they're homemade. Those are from Dollar Tree. Hobby Lobby has some cute carrots. All the craft stores do really. Or if you just have some that you've used in your decor before. 
but however you get your carrots, you're just gonna take one for each of these little molds here and you're just going to stick them in. I kind of like to angle them a little bit different so they're not straight up and down. That's just a matter of personal preference. But I'm just gonna take a little bit of reindeer moss and I'm just going to tuck that in around. That adds just a little bit of a greenery color there. And so that way it just kind of adds a little different element. You do have the option of gluing all of this in to have it stay in there. So that way it will be more permanent. But I wanna be able to change mine out so I did not glue any of mine in it's just all resting in there I have this cute little fresh carrot sign that I picked up at Hobby Lobby I have seen little tiered tray signs like this anywhere so if you had a cute little one for spring or different holidays it would be fun to use the sugar molds are naturally like tapered at the bottom of it and so I wanted it to kind of sit flat rather than be at an angle so I glue a tumbling tower onto the block and then I had a little gouge in the frame, so I just used a Sharpie marker, and I also used a Sharpie around the edges of the tumbling tower block, so you wouldn't be able to see the light color of it, it would just look black. And I just use a minimal amount of glue to make sure that that stays. But I'll also be able to remove it when I do something else, but look at how cute this turned out. I love this. I am so excited to think of different things for different holidays to do with this. If you happen to see these in your antique shopping or flea market or anything, definitely pick one up i will leave that link down in my description box to the ones on amazon i just think they are so cute and i'm going to have so much fun decorating with it i have acquired some different mason jars different shapes from different eras and i love to use them in decorating now if you don't have any of like the antique mason jars or anything that's totally fine you can even just use a regular clear mason jar or any other kind of like vessel that you want to put flowers into but i'm just cutting a piece of cardstock down that will fit into the middle and making a tube out of it and i just use hot glue and tape now if you have a paper towel holder that you want to use to do this that would be perfect i just didn't have a paper paper towel holder and I didn't want to take all my paper towels off of it so I just thought you know I'm just going to make a little tube and do my own and it worked out perfect so I just slide that down in and then I just add the candy around it I'm doing some little uh, jelly belly or jelly beans here and then I just have some little uh, bouquets of flowers but you could use Dollar Tree flowers you could use whatever you wanted so I do one of each size so that way I have one of my smaller jars and one of the taller jars and at our house we love to do the jelly beans but we also love those Cadbury chocolate eggs those are my favorites how about you do you have a favorite Easter candy I mean I like most candy so I'm pretty easy to please but let me know down in the comments what your favorite Easter candy is I would love to see all of the different types that you guys all like so with the smaller jar that I did with the jelly beans I was able to just slip the tube in and pour the jelly beans around that where this jar is a little bit taller and I feel like the mouth it was just a little bit more awkward than the smaller one so I put my flowers in there and then poured the candy in around it so either way is totally good didn't these turn out so cute? I just love them. It's such a great hack to have for different holidays to do different types of seasonal candy and everything in them. And they're so fun. And plus you have a little bit of a hidden treat that you have if you need some chocolate. <laughs> How cute is this little wicker tray? I think this is darling the way that it is, but it is pretty beat up when you get looking at it really close. And so I'm just going to kind of clean it up and wipe it down. And I notice around the edges of the wicker that it is kind of, the paint is kind of chipped. So I just take a little white brush and go around to kind of like cover in those areas. I will distress this a little bit, but I don't really want like the brown wicker. I'm not sure if this was like painted before like if somebody else owned it and painted over like a brown wicker or something so I just kind of do that and then I'm taking some this is elephant chalk paint that I'm going to take on a chip brush and I try to go in pretty light and sometimes you guys like I go in and I think that I'm going to do a really light and you can see that there's some areas on there that are really dark but that's okay because I can go back over once it dries with a little more white chalk paint and just kind of brighten those up a little bit. And then with what is just left of the elephant chalk paint in my brush, I kind of go around the wicker there just to kind of uh, make it look a little bit aged there. Again, completely optional how much you want to do on there. And this is where I go in with some white and I just brighten up those little dark spots that I did at the distressing. I want to use one of the Dollar Tree calendar pages on this and it does kind of have um, a weathered finish to it. I'm using this one right here, this cute little bunny. How darling is this? I love this picture. I think it is so sweet. And I thought this would be really fun to kind of like put up with my cutting boards on my countertop or even in my china hutch or something like that, just kind of as a display item. I thought it would be super cute for spring and Easter. 
but I just think that bunny is so precious. I just love it so much. So I just make sure that the placement and everything looks good. And then if you guys have watched me at all before, you know that I love purple glue stick. I love to use it more than I love Mod Podge on these calendar pages and a lot of more heavy pieces of, um, like paper and things like cardstock and things. I love to use this glue stick. So that's all I'm using here. I do go over it with Mod Podge. I'll show you that in a minute, but to get it to adhere, I'm just going to rub over it with the brayer there to make sure that any bubbles or anything do get pushed out and all those edges are secure. I take my white chip brush and I go over it just a little bit to kind of make it blend in and have it have a little bit of weathered and aged look. Of course, that would be completely optional. I do wipe over this cute little bunny's eyes and nose to kind of make those show a little bit more so that way it makes it a little bit more sharp looking. And then I just go in with Mod Podge and I go all around the base of this and then all like I go around the outer part of the calendar page and then I go over the paper itself. Hopefully that makes sense. You can kind of see what I'm doing here that I go over. And I'm doing this with a satin finish so that way it's not super shiny or anything like that. And if there are any edges that kind of do come up a little bit just because of the Mod Podge, I just make sure I roll after that Mod Podge is dry, I will kind of push those down. But look at how cute this is. I just think this is so precious. I love this. It is perfect for spring and Easter. What do you guys think of this? Have you guys used these calendar pages like this particular one? I would be curious to know what you did with yours, but I just love how this turned out. It would also work really well on a pizza pan from Dollar Tree. So if you can't find like a tray or something like this, a pizza pan, this would be perfect for that. I have this little vase from Dollar Tree. It's so cute, it's a square shape. And I also have these little carrots that I got from Amazon. I'll leave a link to them down in my description box, but you get like, 30 or more little carrots or something. They're so cute, but they do come with like a little hanging tag, almost like you could hang them from a garland or something. I tried just pulling it out, but that ripped the carrot as you can see here. So I just decided to kind of snip that off as close as I could because I don't really need that little ribbon to hang it with. Basically, I just shove a bunch of Spanish moss down into the bottom of this base to kind of give it a little bit of like to prop these carrots up just a teeny bit. And I thought it kind of looked cute. It looks like a little roots maybe from the carrots growing around down there once you get all of these in. But I'm just lining all of these carrots up around the perimeter of that vase. I'm just showing you here different types of carrots that you could use to do this with depending on where you get your carrots from. You may already have some in your decor. I got these little burlap carrots off of a garland that I got at Hobby Lobby that I took apart to use. Uh, they were super cute in there and I just love the little raffia little carrot toppers on them. I take just a little bit of Spanish moss and I just tuck it in between the space of the carrots there to kind of fill in. This is going to help those carrots stay secure and it's also just going to add a little bit into that negative space that was there so that way it kind of fills in and it looks full and intentional. So now I'm just taking some jute twine and I just wrap it around this little bundle of carrots three or four times. And then I just tie it off with just a single little shoestring bow. That's just so cute that the carrots look all cute and tied together there. And that helps them stay together as well. And it looks like just a little bundle of carrots from the farmer's market. I think this turns out so cute. I love using carrots in my spring and Easter decor because it does bring such a pop of that vibrant orange. And I just love the different layers of this. I think it looks so cute. Perfect to tuck on a table or a shelf somewhere. What do you guys think of it? I have seen these little baskets several places. You can find them in the floral section of your craft store. I've even seen them like at TJ Maxx or things. You might even have one in your stash already, but to me, it was the perfect shape for a carrot. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the orange burlap ribbon that I have. I got it just at the craft store. You could use any kind of ribbon. It doesn't have to necessarily be burlap, but that's just what I found and I thought it was super cute. So I start by gluing on the bottom of the edge there, and I'm just going to do a method of kind of gluing around that bottom shape and holding that uh, burlap ribbon into place until it dries so I can get that nice little crisp point on the bottom. And it's like not so crisp. I mean, it doesn't have to be super perfect. But I do go ahead and kind of fold the ribbon under so that way it kind of 
tapers down if that makes sense you'll see here when I wrap this around I end up kind of folding the bottom piece under a little bit just to make sure that it does kind of go down to a point hopefully you can see what I'm doing here but this is just the method of wrapping and gluing every once in a while uh, I feel like if I wanted to after Easter time take this ribbon off there's not as so much glue that I wouldn't be able to do that once you get going it's just a matter of wrapping this ribbon around you can do any kind of like pattern or you can fold the ribbon over whatever you would like I'll show you kind of what I do to add a little bit of texture to it since this is wired ribbon now I was kind of going to go up over the edge here as you can see but I decided not to instead I just put this as close to the top there and then I'm just going to snip it and glue it in the back So to finish this off here, I just take a piece of burlap ribbon, enough that will stretch all the way around to the back, and I fold it over and I bring that up under. That just, to me, gave it a little bit more of a finished look, and I'll just hot glue that together in the back. Now to go back on all of the little uh, layers there, I just kind of bend and crimp each of them to add a little bit of texture to the ribbon. So for my filler, I just have this greenery that I have. You can use anything, any type of plant that you wanted to use. I just thought that was really cute to kind of be the little green top to the carrot. And then I just make a little bow. I just make a loop out of some ribbon and then I will pinch that in the middle and I just use another little lace bow that I have from Dollar Tree to kind of make that add a little cute texture to bows. You guys know I am not the best at bows so I do the best that I can so hopefully I'm explaining well what I did because I can't tie bows I do cut a length of ribbon and kind of bend it at an angle you can see there for the tails and then I just kind of fold that over so the bow fits on it and glue it all together and then I will just glue that onto kind of the side I don't do it right in the center I do it a little bit off side and a bow would be completely optional I just felt like it needed a little something extra and I have this cute Dollar Tree ribbon and I thought it was perfect and you can see and I do decide that it, like the one tail needs to be shortened a little bit so I just go back in and kind of snip that up a little bit but I think this just turned out so cute I just that little bow to me just kind of makes it all right did I do a good job converting this basket into a carrot I thought it turned out really cute and I think the Easter Bunny would definitely stop at my house if this was hanging on my front door it would be so cute also layered with another wreath I just think this turned out really cute are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. So I have tried this technique before and I absolutely love it. We are going to print on some tissue paper. So I'm cutting just a normal piece of tissue paper to be just smaller than a regular size piece of copy paper. And I'm going to put that shiny smooth side of the tissue paper down towards the paper and then just tape down all sides with whatever tape you have. I just have painter's tape on hand there. Uh, but you just wanna make sure all the tissue paper is taped down and you'll feed it through your printer, just like normal paper, and the image prints right on the tissue paper. Now, as I'm cutting this out, I just wanna let you know that the ink will kind of bleed through to that copy paper, so just be aware of that. I found this darling little flower bucket at Dollar Tree this week, so hopefully you'll be able to find them, but I thought it would be fun to give this a really cute uh, blue, pastel blue color for spring, and I'm going to make some faux rust. So I use baking soda along with like a brown color, like a truffle, I use Merlot, a little bit of yellow, and then like the pumpkin orange. And I just get a mixture of all these colors going together and keep adding baking soda, which gives it texture, until I get the color that I think resembles rust the most. You wanna be very sparing with the yellow, but I promise you the yellow is what makes this because when you look at things that actually rust, it will have like the different variations of colors. So once I get this on my brush, which it's quite thick because of the baking soda, I just kind of dab it in. You can see how I'm going all over there. And you just do that until your heart's content with how much rust you want on your project. Now with this tissue paper, I'm just taking a brush with some water and going around the design. And then I will just lightly pull apart the tissue paper to kind of give it a torn look. So instead of a clean cut line with scissors, it's kind of more torn and like natural looking. 
Now using matte Mod Podge, I'm just putting a layer down on my bucket where I want the front to be and uh, just kind of do a very thin layer of it. And then you're going to take your, and I'm just spreading it so it's even, you're gonna take your image and you're just going to lightly press it down starting in the middle and then just lightly press because the tissue paper will tear once it gets a little bit of moisture on it. So you're just going to lightly press and if there's any bubbles, you just kind of lightly smooth those out. This is very sped up of how I did that. So just know you're going to work a little slow. And then I take the matte Mod Podge. And right now I'm just going around the edges to make sure the edges are all down. And then after I have that, I will go over very lightly with a very light coat of Mod Podge over the design. And then to make that image kind of blend in a little more, I take and dry brush some of the original blue color over the top of the design. Now, if you did this on a white bucket, if you'd painted it white, that image would completely disappear and you would not be able to see the part of the tissue paper at all. And it picks it up kind of in the light on camera, the, the tissue paper, but honestly, when you're looking at it with like your naked eye, you can hardly see that it's tissue paper. But I love this design. I just threw some of my peonies left over from one of my wreath projects and put in there and I think this looks so beautiful. That rust looks so natural to me. It looks like it's been sitting out in your garden like all winter long. You forgot to bring it in and it just kind of rusted. I just think it's so spring and so cute and I love this color. Let me know what you guys think about that rust down in the comments if you like it or if you're not a fan. This darling little drawer or box came from Hobby Lobby's clearance, but there are so many little boxes at thrift stores that you could find or anything that you may already have. This would be so easy to do. And I did get these eggs just at the craft store and I'm just taking the little ribbons out of them. Now I do not, you could leave them the plaid and that would be super cute, but I kind of wanted to go with a more neutral tone. So here I'm just, it's showing you how you just heat these up. They're styrofoam, those ribbons come right out. I'm putting these eggs on a little skewer in to some styrofoam here and I'm going to take them out into my garage and spray paint them and then I am going to give them some different colors here so this one I'm doing kind of in like a gray I think this is the mineral color by Waverly's chalk paint and I just give it a couple of coats to have it look like more of a natural egg this other one the paint that I ended up using it was a spray paint ended up being very close to the color of the box itself so I'm just going to brighten it up a little bit so I'm just taking a little bit of like the ca a cashew color or kind of a yellow color to go over that egg. And then I'm also using a light gray. This is the silver lining by Waverly's chalk paint. And I'll just go over that. And then I actually, once I get that on, take a wipe and kind of blend it together. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. This of course would be completely optional. The only reason I did this was because that egg was very close to the same color of my box and I wanted a little contrast. But once I did it, I actually liked the way that it looked. So I did the same thing on the other egg. Now I'm just taking a square of styrofoam and I'm just going to cut it in half and glue it into the bottom of the box. To cover the styrofoam, I'm just using some Spanish moss and I will just take a skewer and kind of tuck it down on all the sides. You will not end up seeing the Spanish moss after I get everything put into this little box. So I just wanted it tucked down in. It just needs a surface to do what I'm going to do. So now I put some skewers on the bottom of these eggs and then I just place them right into the styrofoam. I do one kind of at an angle, that gray one, and then the, the blue one is more kind of standing up straight maybe a little bit of skew if that makes sense. Now I'll just take some little green reindeer moss and I am just going to go place this in all around these eggs all over this box as if these eggs were sitting on grass. And if there's any hard to reach places or anything, I just use that skewer to kind of help tuck it down in there. That skewer worked great for that. So I have a bunch of succulents that I have picked up just over at Dollar Tree. It's something I pick up all the time when I am there. I'll grab a couple of them, or I also order some of them off Amazon. I can leave a link to those down in my description box too, because they are just a little bit more expensive than what you would pay at Dollar Tree, but the quality is so much better. But I'm just kind of playing around, tucking some succulents in all around the eggs. I'm just doing like a dry fit right now before I start gluing them in and after I figure out where I want everything I'll start using some hot glue to get those uh, put in there so that way they won't move anywhere. And since the succulents is a little bit heavier you just want to make sure that when you use your hot glue you kind of hold it until you know that it's not going to like fall or like tilt a direction that way you can make sure it's nice and sturdy. 
I even have these little teeny succulents that I glue in kind of as a space filler and if I need to go in between those eggs or anything like that I just use my skewer to kind of put those in. Now I look at these eggs and realized I wanted to do like a speckled effect on them so I just removed them from their little skewers, did a little antique wax with some water here and this brush probably was not ideal. You want like stiff bristles on a brush to do this but this got the job done. I just kind of flicked it. This does make a mess so just know that this kind of goes everywhere if you want to lace some like newspaper down or something while you're doing it but you just kind of dip it in that little antique wax and then just kind of flip the bristles back and it will just put those little speckles all over the eggs I just thought that was cute I kind of like the way it looked but I just placed those eggs back and here we go I think this is absolutely beautiful guys I've seen little arrangements like this online and they go for so much money I think this turned out so beautiful and so high-end and it's something you could truly leave out all spring in my shopping around online for Easter decor, I have seen a lot of bunny topiaries for like your front porch, and I thought it would be super cute to make a little miniature version. I am just using these already made moss balls that I got in the floral section at my craft store, and I just need two of them. They came in a package of four, and I'm just taking a little teeny pot from Dollar Tree, and I'm just shoving some Spanish moss down in there. That's going to give something for my little skewer here to like stick into. So I just take a barbecue skewer and I am just going to put the top and the bottom onto that. So that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. And then I'm just going to cut that little skewer down to size. There was a little bit peeking out of the top there. So I am just doing that and I'll pull that top layer up so you can't see that at all. For the ears, I'm just using some burlap ribbon and I just do my best to freehand the shape of an ear. I leave it a little wider at the bottom because I need to fold these in. Once I get a shape that works, I just use that as a template to cut my second ear out. Now how I get this to be folded so it's an ear and it looks cute, you can see how that is there. I'm just going to take the inside portion of the ear that is will be facing me and I fold the edges backwards. So I put a little glue and I fold those edges backwards. So you can see exactly how I do that and I'll just add a little teeny daub of glue there. Fold that back, okay. So there we go. You can see how I fold that in to make that little uh, crease in the ear and then I just put a skewer in there and glue that together and that's what makes a really cute like tuck in the ear so that way it looks like an actual bunny ear and I do the same process with the second ear. Honestly, I feel that this is very forgiving, this process right here. So if you feel like this is intimidating at all, honestly, cut sort of the shape out of an ear and just kind of start gluing it to the skewer. It's going to work out. I was pretty skeptical, but really as I was doing this, I was like, you know what? Like it's very forgiving. And as long as you get that general shape of an Easter bunny ear, I think you're doing good. So after I get those edges tucked back, then I just put glue in the middle, lay that skewer down in and fold those sides over that. It's so, it really is so easy guys. And then for, since I left the skewers a little bit longer, I will go in and trim those down so that way I can have them to stick in. So here I'm just going to cut those down and you just push those right in. They stay very firmly in there. You, you could add a little glue if you wanted to, but it was fine. Now they sell these at Hobby Lobby. These are like napkin holders so you could easily get something like that to use and I'm just going to tie just a very simple little bow around our bunny to define between the body and its head and then I'm going to use what I always use purple glue stick just to give a little bit of stick onto that ribbon so it's not kind of sticking out I thought it would be cute more to have it on its body so that's why I did that this would be so perfect for a tiered tray, just a shelf, anything like that. I think this turned out darling. I love the size of it. It is much better to fit into my home and my decor. I absolutely love how this turned out. Do you think it turned out cute? This is kind of a fun way to make some little carrots for your decor. I have these little spindles from Amazon and I'll also leave a link to these down in my description box. So I'm just gonna use six of these to make a little bundle of carrots. And I thought it would be fun to kind of do different colors. Since if you guys, I don't know if you've ever grown different colors of carrots or anything, that's one of my favorite parts of growing them is all the different types of colors we get. So I'm just going to do kind of like a traditional orange. Then I'm just adding a little bit of a brown color to make a little bit darker orange. And and then also this red color. We've had carrots this color and it's so fun. My kids love it. So I just thought it would be kind of fun to do all those different colors. 
For the greenery part of my carrot, I'm just using some eucalyptus sprigs that I have from Walmart, I think is where I got these. And I just cut off a bunch of little teeny sprigs. And then to kind of make them look even around the carrot, I'm just going to do at what is the top of my carrot, just do a little line of glue. And then I just take that little eucalyptus and just hold it there until it completely, the glue dries. So that way it's not gonna fall off once I let go. To give the greenery a little extra stability, I'm just going to wrap some twine around it. So I just glue one end of the twine on and then just wrap until I feel that it is really secure on there. And then I'll just cut that off and glue that end of it down. I thought that number one, it added a little bit more like stability for the greenery to stay on, but and kind of mask where the stems were glued on. But I thought it kind of added a fun rustic look to the carrots. I mean, they're obviously fake carrots because they're spindles. So why can't you have twine on a fake carrot, right? <laughs> but I just do the same thing with all six carrots. Here's an up close look at how I get that glue to stay on. So you do have to sit there and hold it for just a minute to make sure that those little leaves stay on there really well. And then I just start that twine there with a little bit of glue and then I will just start wrapping that right up. We love planting carrots in our garden. Do you guys plant a garden? I would love to know like what types of things you guys plant in there. We obviously we have a farm. We have a very big garden at our farm, but we do a garden at our house also. And carrots are one of those things that we plant at both places. We just love them. I take a little bit of twine and just tie them together so that way it's a little bundle of carrots and I think they turned out so cute. They're perfect to have standing up or laying down or just having with a cute little vignette or something. Just adds that little pop of orange and I love the different colors that are in there. So I am taking this package of bunnies that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm taking three of them. I believe it comes with like six or eight in a package, but I am taking each one of these three to represent my three children. So you can do them in any group number that you want, but that's where I came to the conclusion of doing three. So I'm just using some spackling to cover up. They come with a little hole that you can make like a garland or something, tie a little, make ornaments or something out of them. So I just take spackle and I just cover that hole and let that dry so it becomes a solid piece. So now I am just going to paint each of my bunnies. Now you can do whatever colors you want. You guys, I let my three kids come and pick out the colors they wanted. I told them they had to kind of be like all pastels or all bright colors or something like that. And these are the, these are the tones that they all chose and the colors that they all chose. So I love the fact that I included them, but they're a little brighter than my normal decor. But I love the colors they picked out and I'm so excited that this represents them and each color that they picked. So I'm taking these frames that also came from Dollar Tree and I just removed the little clip from them and then I took out the little galvanized metal and I flipped it upside down because they had a hole on them and I want my bunny when I place it down to cover that hole. So now I'm just taking some little wooden cubes that I have from Dollar Tree and I just glue those down and that will kind of prop these bunnies out to be more 3D. This would be totally optional but I do like that 3D feel that it gives. So now I take just a little bit of hot glue and I just go down the edge of the one frame there and you can see I'm kind of just pushing that next frame frame together and I'm kind of putting it at an angle at the front at first and then pushing it backwards so that way the glue if it seeps out will seep out on the back and not on the front you can kind of see I place those front edges together and then push it back hopefully that makes sense now sometimes Dollar Tree things are not all symmetrical so when I went to place this the little flaps on the back that like hang those up or not hang them up but stand them up it was not really level so I just tore all of those off and I just cut a couple craft sticks to glue on to reinforce the back of this and now I'm just going with a little chip brush and I'm just doing a little bit of distressing around each of the bunnies. I'm doing this just to add a little bit more texture to it since it is on that little uh, cube and it's got that 3D look to it. This just kind of helps give it a little bit more dimension. I first went around with antiquing wax and then decided that one in the middle needed a little bit bright white and I liked how that looked so I did that on all sides. And then I just took some twine and stapled that onto the back in case I decided to hang this because I wasn't really sure where I was putting it. And now I just found these little pom-poms and I thought they would be so cute to make these bunnies have a little cotton tail. So not only do I have the option to hang this, but I take a couple of the tumbling tower blocks and I just glue those onto the back and I'm kind of standing it up so it, it doesn't like fall forward or anything. I get the right angle that I need for it to stand up. So if I decide to prop this up somewhere or hang it, I have either of those options. So I'm just showing you both here that you can do it either way, whatever best fits your style. But look at how cute it turns out. I might even go in with a little tag or cut up my Cricut, my kids' names to put on each of 
with the bunnies, but I just thought this was so cute and it was a fun way to kind of include them. They were all excited to see. I didn't tell them what I was doing. I just had them pick out the colors of paint. So it was kind of fun for them to see what this looked like when I got it all done. But what do you guys think of this? So I wanted to make a little hanging garland for my house. I love to do uh, change up garlands for different times of the season or anything. So I'm taking four of these little eggs from a package that came from Dollar Tree that comes with, and I can't remember if it's six or eight guys, but there's a bunch of these in the package. So I paint them all white, and then I wanna do just kind of like a little ticking stripe down. I've done a couple ticking stripe Easter decorations this year, and so I kind of wanted this to tie everything in, and it they turn out so cute. So I really am going and embracing seen the little ticking stripe but I'm using that uh, washi tape and the um, just some painters tape to make that stripe so hopefully you can kind of tell what I'm doing here it's pretty self-explanatory but whenever I do stripes or anything and I use tape I put a little bit of paint on my little sponge there and I pounce up and down let that dry and then you can go over and do your other coats you can see I kind of use a brush there at the end to get it on thicker what the pouncing does is it kind of seals where that little area is from your tape and your surface to give you those nice crisp lines. So you can see here as I tear off all of the paint, this is the most satisfying part when you're crafting of doing stripes is peeling off that tape and seeing nice, crisp, clean lines. If you've ever done any type of uh, striping or anything, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you were lucky enough to find some of the little wooden shapes at Dollar Tree that were the Easter shapes, you could easily use those for this or skip this part altogether. But I did cut out some little bunny shapes with some faux burlap paper on my Cricut, and I'm just going to use some purple school glue to glue those to the front of the eggs. So I've had a few people ask where I buy this school glue if I get it at Dollar Tree and I don't. I do typically buy it at Walmart at back to school time. It goes on super cheap clearance. You can also get it on Amazon. But I have all these different styles of carrots that I could use my for my garland, but I thought this plaid looked really cute with these stripes. And I got this package at Hobby Lobby and it came with, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 for, and it ended up with the 40% off being only just like, $2 I think for all of them. Anyway, I just used some floral wire to wrap around each of the carrot tops, the little stems, and also on the top of the eggs. I just feed that through. I thought the floral wire would be kind of different so that way it would they wouldn't like flop all around when it was hanging. Hopefully that makes sense. So for the actual garland part, I'm just using some rope from Dollar Tree. I just cut it down to size. Six feet was what I cut mine to. That's what fits my surface. And I just take these little loops. I make little loops on the end and I'm just wrapping them with some more of that floral wire. And then I just twist it off on the end there. And that gives me, I have some little command hooks that I hang from side to side for my garland there. And I just fold it in half to find the middle. And that's where I stick that first carrot on. So I just kind of stick the floral wire through the rope you can see here and um, I, I wanted like a six inch gap and I had one of these little pallets from Dollar Tree and that's how I'm using what I'm using for my space because I didn't my ruler was like 12 inches so it didn't fit exactly if that even makes sense to you I just wanted something that I could hold in place there and I just go through and just like twist all of these on and it turns out so cute I love this it is definitely going to tie all of those other projects I've done in other videos this year with that little ticking stripe on there I think it turned out so cute do you guys like to do garlands a lot I have a couple places in my house I love to switch out for different seasons and so I always like doing them but I would love to know if you do like garlands or if it's something that you're kind of not a big fan of I found this little ceramic egg little basket thing at the thrift store and it reminded me kind of of the shape of the Ray Dunn pieces that you see. It is very like 90s looking to me so I decided to paint over it. I just did some white chalk paint and I painted all over the outside as well as the inside even though you'll end up not seeing the inside but we know that it's painted. And then I had to kind of prop it since it is kind of an odd shape as an egg there. I had to prop it into something to get a good hold um, and I just cut out on my Cricut the word egg kind of in that it's called the skinny font I can leave a link to it down in my description box but it's kind of the faux radon font and I thought it would just be cute to have it say eggs there you could easily trace this on there or do a sharpie or something like that or you could just leave it plain you could also paint this any color that you wanted to as well so I just take some Spanish moss and I just pile that in really good and I pack it down really firmly you could glue this in if you wanted to I feel like once I get everything in it's pretty secure it's not budging or 
anything, so I'm not worried about it. But I did trim off the edges because I don't want that Spanish moss to really show if I can help it. So now I am just taking some eggs that I have in my decor stash. I use these to decorate or vase fillers or anything. Wherever I pick these eggs up, I just kind of keep a bunch on hand. So I'm just taking those and I'm gluing the big ones in, just gluing them to the Spanish moss. And then I will take some reindeer moss, which is that green spongy moss. And I am just tucking that with like a little uh, barbecue skewer there tucking that down in all around the eggs. If I feel like it needs some glue, I put some glue, hot glue down um, and just cover it all so it looks kind of like a bed of grass. And then I go in with my smaller eggs, you can see there, and I just kind of glue those and tuck those in. So this just looks like a cute little basket of speckled eggs with that kind of reindeer moss to kind of give it that little green grass look. I think this looks so cute. I love the feel that this gives off and I'm so excited to use it. This little picket fence came from Dollar Tree and it is so cute and I was trying to come up with the perfect project to do with it and I absolutely love how this turns out. So I do just paint all of the little picket fence here with some chalk paint and I paint it white and I'm careful just to get in between all of the little edges and all the little creases and then I take this little chick that came from a package of like six or eight or something from Dollar Tree and I just paint it all yellow and I thought it would be so cute to kind of put this little chick on my little picket a fence so I just take a tumbling tower block so I can prop that chick out just a little bit that would be totally optional but what I'm going to do is take some reindeer moss and I am going to glue it all along the bottom of the picket fence so it looks like the chick is kind of standing in some grass against the fence so I just use hot glue to place that down just be careful not to burn your fingers when you're doing this part just because um, you know it is moss that you're putting there and if you push down too hard that glue will seep up so you can wear finger protectors or anything but I just take little pieces of that and I just glue it all along the bottom there. I just want to let you guys know that I absolutely appreciate and love all of the support that you have given me. And if you do like what you're seeing in the video, remember to hit that like button. And if you're new here, welcome. Consider subscribing. I would love to have you join the Farm Term Chic family. We love to have lots of fun and do fun DIYs here. So I do glue that little chick down and then I take just a little bit more of that reindeer moss and kind of put it around the little feet there. And then you could even go as far as doing like a little orange on its um, little legs and like its beak or anything like that. I just kind of made it a little bit simple and kind of liked, I, I was afraid honestly I was gonna mess it up. So I just kind of left it how it was. But I thought, and you could do this easily before you put that little chick down, but I just uh, distressed the fence here. So I just went with a chip brush and I was kind of heavy in places. I really wanted it to just kind of look like a little shabby you know like it was a little farm fence and I took the end of a paintbrush in some black paint and made a little eye on our little chick there and thought it would be so cute to do a little twine bow around its neck so I do take a piece of one of the paint sticks and cut off and I kind of sanded the edges to round it off there I painted it with some antiquing wax and then I cut out the word chirp to put on there I thought that was so cute to have this little chick he's just trying to tell us something and all we can understand is chirp but he's probably Probably saying happy Easter or something like that anyway I thought he was just really cute this is perfect for a little cute tiered tray or again just something to set on a shelf somewhere in your house I just thought it was really unique and super cute but what do you think about this little chick this is such an easy project to do and I got inspiration for this off of Pinterest and I saw somebody make carrots out of clothespins which I thought was a brilliant idea because when you take the clothespins apart and place the flat ends together they literally look like carrots so it's brilliant and I love it. So you're just going to do that to however many carrots you want in your box. Just use some hot glue to glue those together. You could use wood glue if you wanted a really strong bond but these carrots are not going to be doing that much other than sitting there so hot glue should work just fine for for you. I did paint the carrots with an orange color and then I am taking just one of these little crates from Dollar Tree and I am just painting it in a green color. I have loved this color for springtime and I think it contrasts really well with the carrots but you could customize it to whatever you would like to do. Now I'm just taking some of the grass from the floral section at Dollar Tree and I am just cutting it off at the end and that is what I'm using for the little uh, greenery on the bottom of the carrot. Whatever you have that you would like to use, I know carrot greenery does not traditionally look like this but it works for the color and whatever so you can use whatever you would like but I'm just taking the little end there and I'm just putting a little hot glue and then I will just carefully place that onto the top of the carrot and I'll just hold it into place until it dries and I'm just going to do that with all of my carrots. 
Using my Cricut, I just cut out this little uh, bunny bait little box here. It has this little bunny. It says five cents or something on it. I just found it on Cricut Design Space. Uh, you would not have to do this. It would be completely optional. You could even just use a Sharpie just to write something cute across the front of it. You wouldn't even have to make it like bunny themed for Easter since if it's going to be like springtime, you could just do something, just carrots, five cents or something like that on it. But I also take some antiquing wax and just go around the edge and on all those little ridges in that crate just to kind of age it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to peel off my stencil and it is a very rustic look And so I'm not super concerned about how well the transfer turns out just so you can see it It kind of just adds a little decorative touch under the front I just glue a couple pieces of styrofoam into the bottom That is where your carrots are going to be placed And then I just kind of spaced out the carrots to begin with and made little holes in the styrofoam So I knew how far apart to space them and now I'm just sticking a little bit of glue down in each of those little holes I created in the styrofoam and placing each carrot in there and hold it up until it dries because styrofoam and hot glue You know the combination kind of melts the styrofoam So if you hold it until it dries you'll get a very firm hold in there And then I just take some Spanish moss I put a little bit of glue down so that Spanish moss stays nice and tucked down in there And then just using a barbecue skewer or a dowel or something I just put that little Spanish moss in between each of the carrots kind of cover up that styrofoam and then just to add a little bit of texture to it I think it just turns out so cute this little box of carrots here it is so perfect for springtime or just to have that nice pop of orange in your decor I would like to thank you so much for taking time to watch this compilation make a video. It really means a lot to me. Did your favorite make the list? Did you see something new that you enjoyed? I would love to know down in the comments, either one of those. I always love reading what you guys enjoy seeing. I hope that you have such an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.